Hi guys, Emma here. Today I'm going to be doing the Twin Peaks Lottery. Like I said I would be. Thank you for leaving your comments on my last video. I've collected them all up along with some comments and questions that I took off Twitter and I've put them all on a piece of paper and put them into this charming box. <laughs> so... Oh no! <laughs> I don't know how many there are, but there's quite a lot. So I'm just going to pick one see where we go. Agent Cooper, perfect American hero or a flawed hero? I think that depends on what your definition of flawed is. Is it because of a character trait or is it because he has messed up and has not succeeded at the quest of saving someone, of saving Laura, particularly in light of season three. I personally like to see Dale Cooper as the pinnacle of good, of ultimate good. He is the antithesis of Bob and everything evil on the show. I don't think he's a perfect individual. He has made mistakes, we know that. We see them on screen and we know of them beforehand. Mary, I've brought some baggage to town I haven't told you about. But in my eyes, that just makes him human. Cooper is, in my opinion, like a grown-up version of a Boy Scout, with nothing but pure intentions. I think a valid question to ask would be, how does Laura Palmer see Dale Cooper? In light of their lives being changed forever, and in very drastic ways, what would Audrey and Annie think of Dale Cooper? Maybe you brought uh, the nightmare with you. How, what would Renette think of Cooper? Would they appreciate that he's trying to do good? In my mind, at least, when I think of a flawed hero, Dale Cooper is not a fictional character that springs to mind immediately. Although I can see the argument for the interpretation of such. I think it really depends on your personal viewpoint on this. Tell me what you think. Do you think he is a flawed hero or do you think he is a perfect hero? Is it impossible to decide? Okay, next one. <laughs> Food, specifically sandwiches. <laughs> this is the best damn sandwich I ever ate. <laughs> I don't know if that was a joke. Somebody wrote that on the last video. Um, <laughs> and yes. Yeah. Specifically sandwiches. Um, I think my favorite sandwich was the one with Big Ed, Norma and Nadine. But yeah, food obviously plays a huge part in Twin Peaks. And what does it all represent? We've got the heavenly kind of wholesome food at the diner, the kind of food that your mother served you back in the 50s before everything became TV dinners and pre-packed rubbish. <laughs> I think that might be representative of where the town sits, both emotionally and in terms of the way they're kind of isolated from the rest of America, I guess. In a way, they're a very small town. They still have these old school values and ways. If you think of cherry pie, it's like dual meaning there. You have the pie that's kind of plain and conservative on the outside and yet saucy and juicy in the inside. We obviously associate that very strongly with Audrey since she has that unique cherry stalk tying scene. And of course, that probably links in with what cherry means in terms of virginity or loss of virginity. And we've got donuts. Apart from the obvious joke about cops supposedly eating donuts all the time, I think that they are visually stunning. You know, we see them used in that scene with Waldo's blood, um, a direct comparison of horror and beauty in the same scene. They are the innocent man's vice, if you like. A way to enjoy something indulgent and slightly naughty that's legal. 
and we can obviously compare that against certain scenarios in Twin Peaks which are much more nefarious. We have things like Hutch and Chantal. Chantal? Chantal? <laughs> However you pronounce it. Eating food in season three, that's completely junk food. And I saw that as a representation of their social class more than anything else. And also with some possible commentary on junk food manufacturers and what that's doing to society as a whole. How that's feeding our brains. Then we have coffee, which I think is quite a complicated symbol in Twin Peaks. It's one of the things that Twin Peaks is known for. If you were to play a casual word association game with a casual fan, then they'd probably say coffee in the first breath. It's Agent Cooper's fuel. It's what drives him to do his best work. It keeps him alert. It's a shared experience too. Again, it has strong connections with the American identity, I think. I think we can strongly associate it with being the opposite almost of the oil that's used by the Black Lodge inhabitants. I think you could even go as far as to look at the qualities of coffee, the darkness, the deepness. Perhaps the coffee itself stands for the mystery of Twin Peaks. Dark and deep. Impenetrable. If we think of creamed corn and what that means for the Black Lodge inhabitants, and we could think of coffee and what that means for Adrian Cooper. And they serve almost in direct comparison with one another, with each other. <laughs> if you really want to talk about sandwiches, then that scene with Ben and Jerry, that wonderful scene where they consume those huge baguettes. <laughs> I love that scene. It's so representative of who the brothers are at that time in their lives. And their consumption of those sandwiches seems to suggest that they have a greed for life itself. They want to taste everything. So I'm going to shut up now <laughs> and go on to the next one. <laughs> Laura Palmer impact story. Okay. I know that a lot of people who have enjoyed Twin Peaks have their own stories, particularly with regards to the character of Laura Palmer. And these people have gone through really tough times in their lives. And Laura's existence, the telling of Laura's story, was enough to help them survive such things. I'm not just talking about that they had similar experiences to Laura, I'm talking about people who had drug problems, um, homelessness, a variety of different things. I've read about different stories from fans over the years. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing that any character can be written so well that they can make such an impact, change people's lives for the better. I think Laura is so well written that she is so representative of abuse victims and that itself is an extremely important story and one that still remains regardless of season three. I know that a few people voiced concern that seeing Laura's origin story in some way diminished the fact that she was a survivor in her own right and didn't have this sort of divine beginning. But I don't see it like that. I think she suffered as a girl, as a normal teenage girl. I have a Laura impact story, but mine is from the perspective of being a Donna in that friendship of someone else who was a Laura Palmer. And when I say she was a Laura Palmer, I mean it in every sense of the word. She was self-destructive, self-harming, confused, angry, upset. Um, I didn't know what she was going through at the time. When I did and looked back, a lot of her behaviours made perfect sense to me. Um, the way our relationship had been, the way she, her relationship had been with others, her sexual promiscuity. I just think that... I think that Lynch and Frost, when they wrote Laura, were incredibly astute. I especially find Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me very powerful in that aspect of we get that sense of the 
whole Laura, we see really what she was going through. Whereas in season one and two, she was perhaps an enigma to us. If you are interested in hearing some of the stories, then you can find them out there on the main Twin Peaks websites, as well as on people's social media pages. It's pretty easy to find instances. And I know there have been some high profile fans in the community who have very interesting and moving Laura impact stories. So yeah, this is, oh, I keep dropping these. This is the last one I'm gonna do for today. Funniest scene in Twin Peaks The Return. <laughs> this could be a rather jarring change of tone in this video, couldn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Could it be this one? My dharma is the road. Your dharma. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a controversial choice. I know that that scene really divided opinion when it was aired. I, however, can't get enough, and I know that in a recent interview that Mark Frost said he also liked that as well. Um, I wasn't that familiar with the actor going in, so whether that had an effect on people's opinions, I don't know. If you didn't like the scene, if you didn't find it funny, please tell me why. I'm interested to know. I just love the delivery. <laughs> it was very season two-esque, wasn't it? Um, there was something of uh, passing the baton thing about it as well because we always associated comedy with Lucy and Andy primarily. They were the comedy characters in the first part, the seasons one and two of Twin Peaks. Um, and I guess if you were thinking, um, you can't get any kookier than Andy and Lucy, then <laughs> you just look at Wally Brando and you're proven wrong, right? It's interesting actually that some people have this strange theory that Wally Brando is not actually the son of Lucy and Andy. And as such, they read that scene in a very different way. They see it as sad because they think Lucy and Andy were bereaved at some point and that this guy has been hired as an actor because they couldn't take the death of their son. They couldn't accept it. Um, it's a very odd theory, but I always say every theory goes. Another theory is that Wally Brando is actually not the son of Andy. And this is just based on his delivery and his style and everything, that he is much more like Dick Tremaine in character. And that again would be a little bit sad if you believe that. Um, but I just see this as comedy gold, to be honest. It is classic Twin Peaks. It's absurd. It's strange. It's funny. It's over the top. <laughs> I love the awkward reaction by Sheriff Truman and the fact that Wally Brando was completely oblivious to this <laughs> and Andy and Lucy as well of course they <laughs> they are reading that speech in a completely different light to Sheriff Truman. But anyway I know that a lot of people like the Dougie moments and to be honest although I really didn't like Dougie when The Return was airing subsequent viewings have made me a little fonder to him and let's say the comedy aspects are more heartwarming i wouldn't say they are direct slapstick laugh out loud rib clutching comedy moments but i am feeling much warmer towards those duggy moments so let me know what you think is the funniest moment of twin peaks the return or Twin Peaks in general. Um, I'm guessing there will be a few different answers and I'm guessing not everyone will agree on the Wally Brando thing. So that's all I'm gonna do for today. If you would like to leave a topic to add to this box, <laughs> then please do so by leaving a comment in the section below. And I will continue to make these videos and go through some more. I'm gonna drop this box <laughs> in a minute. I'm just gonna drop the whole thing.
thank you very much for watching today and I hope you can come back next time. Until then, bye!